Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've had quite a week last week, and um, and this was like pre-recording at this point in time, uh, this particular show. But uh, again, uh, the message is going. Message it will be given to you, actually, in a series of two shows. We're going to be doing a live show right after this particular show, so you can pick it, pick the, pick this particular show up on the YouTube. You can pick it up on YouTube, and you can pick the first show up, the second show, if you will, also on YouTube. We're going to be talking about that issue also too. But we felt that we, the first show we wanted to do, we wanted to really talk to an issue that, um, that in most cases, politics has pretty well taken over the this whole issue of uh, uh, the shootings and whatever. And what I mean by that, uh, I guess on the Hill, they're gonna be dealing with this issue from a political standpoint. And it'll probably get most of the press at this point in time. But in all due respect, what about our youth? What about our kids? Uh, what, what about the mental illness area along that particular line? What about other issues other than just guns? Uh, and, and how did we get to that point where we get to the point where young people are or i.e. getting into these kinds of issues and whatever. Not, not only young, because at one point in time, you know, babies were having babies. They've grown up, and they're having the same issues. We've not even addressed their issues, and they're grown-ups today, okay? So so what we're doing, I, I, I've got a couple of people here with me this, uh, at this point in time. In fact, I've got another person who's going to be probably joining us anyway. But I've got Becky Black from McCoy Academy. Becky has been, I mean, she has been out there um, as a charter school. In fact, I was a part and partial of that, so I had the opportunity to, to see some of the issues that she was dealing with. An area that in most cases the public schools are not, in many ways, not dealing with, even though uh, charter schools are sort of pu- supposed to be part and partial of part uh, of uh, of the Portland public schools or public schools as a whole. It still is a sidebar, if you will. If I had my brothers, we wouldn't even have anything. I would just basically say, schools make it happen, fix it. But in all due respect, we have to have individuals like um, uh, like the McCoy Academies of the world to to respond to issues that the masses of the uh, of the of the education system does not deal with. And then another individual who's with us is John Cannon. He's been around uh, the state of Oregon, for that matter, and addressing the issues of, of young people across the board. Uh, I, f- I first recognized um, John Canada uh, when he was uh, working for the mayor, mayor, mayor of the city of Port of Mayor Potter. Yes, sir. Uh, he was working for Mayor Potter, and uh, however, it was a small part still. Uh, it still wasn't there, but at least uh, uh, former Chief Potter at least recognize the fact that there was an issue and he he was in in the ball game if you will well as you know chief Potter now is not uh, he's not mayor of the city of portland at this point in time uh, he's enjoys his retirement a little bit he still gets involved in a number of things but john carries a, he's carrying the ball and he's been involved in a number of the issues but he's still focused if you will on young people young people who are needing help and guidance and whatever and trying to educate the majority community as to the need if you will to to address issues in those in those particular areas so these are two people going to be joining like i said it'll be sort of like open-ended if you will we're just going to have a discussion we're talking to the aftermath of the of this whole shooting incident but in all due respect we should have been addressing this issue a long time ago but it's given us the opportunity to do so We've got a president that's elected, that has been re-elected now. I hope we understand why he's there for an additional four years, because I really would have some concern uh, whether or not, in fact, that people would have addressed this issue or put it right in just in the area of PTS, post-traumatic stress. And you know what that's all about. Now. Every military person that, is, that has gotten out of the service of late has basically been addressed PTS, and there's all the accolades about helping the veterans and whatever, but they're still not addressing the issues. So with that, I think I've said enough. Let's get out there and let's uh, first off, let's start off, Becky, with just, just sharing with the viewing audience a little bit about yourself and the school, the McCoy Academy, and, and I know you've been there, Kellogg's and all, right? Thanks, Bruce. Thanks sure. for inviting me over today, and, and thanks for letting me be here with John Kanda, who I have worked with for 25 years. Yes. And uh, uh-huh. this man has never ceased from what he is trying to do to help the young people in our community. Mm-hmm. He has been there for the 25 years, and I know we'll be there ongoing. Um, I'm the founder and director of several alternative schools in the metropolitan area, and my belief is that the children that are falling through the cracks, the children that are being expelled at the first sign of trouble, 
the children that we don't know how to deal with are the ones that turn into sometimes the shooters, that turn into somebody who doesn't have anything to live for, uh, their life has been rough, and they give up. And those are the very young people we need to touch, and we need to be there for them. And um, so the focus of my schools is, is, is to work with young people who, for whatever reason, aren't making it in a traditional school, who maybe, maybe they have academic issues, but also maybe they have mental health issues, maybe they have emotional issues. Uh, whatever their need is, I think that young people that aren't making it in the mainstream of education need us and need us to be sure that we can help guide them. And one of the things, uh, I believe in early intervention and prevention, but I know for a fact that it's not too late when a young person is 16 or 17. It is not too late to That's impact right. their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a personal story about John. I won't share all the details, except I know an individual who's in my family whose life was certainly not the best and who was headed in the wrong direction. and. An intervention by this gentleman turned her life around, where she is now an extremely productive individual and doing good work. And so it takes all of us. It takes all of us to care about those young people that sometimes aren't the most lovable, mm -hmm. that sometimes are the most difficult to, to reach. Unless we do something about them, unless we quit kicking them out of the system as soon as they show signs of trouble, this situation isn't going to change. We're going to have angry, depressed, sorrowful young people who have nothing to live for. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it's, it's people like John Kanda and others in the community that have devoted their lives to make a difference in these young people's lives. And um, for that, I'm so grateful. I've lived in this community 25 years, and, and I've watched the work of many unrecognized people who are out there every day on the street mm -hmm. at Holiday Park monitoring in the evening mm -hmm. on the weekends mm -hmm. doing things that they're not getting paid for that they're not getting accolades for mm -hmm. that makes a difference in our community I'm proud to be a part of Northeast Portland I think there are so many good people doing the right thing but there's a lot of work to be done yes you know I might add to I uh, let me let me correct something here I am being a member of the board for with McCoy Academy for a number of years and recognizing the fact that we weren't a charter school. It was just actually going out there and raising the funds necessary to keep things going. Am I right, Sheila? We were a charter, charter school now? for a couple of years. Couple and of years. We're private, privately funded. We're totally funded by the community. And, and individuals. A hundred percent of our funding of comes from the private community. Yeah. And uh, we're still there after 25 we're years. We're going to talk a little bit more about that as we, go, as we get into this discussion. John? Thanks. How about a little brief intro? Well, um, thank you, Mr. Broussard, for having me here. It's also my pleasure to be sitting next to a very distinguished woman in this community. I, I remember the days um, of organ outreach in the King facility, mm -hmm. and 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 Ms. Black was down uh, down the hall from the Northeast Coalition, where I got my start as a street gangs outreach worker. And uh, there were kids that were um, just just flocking into the building. Mm -hmm. At that time, you know, the King facility was, was still seen as, as the hub of the, the black mm -hmm. community, right in the center. And so at the far west end, we had the, the parole and probation office. Um, Becky's office was just next to theirs at Oregon Outreach. Up the hall a little ways, we had some drug and alcohol uh, programs. We had, uh, I think, people from DHS there at, at, at one point, and then the coalition office. Uh, let me not forget the uh, the neighborhood mediation center that was there. Manuel Paris and and, wow. and others were, well, were in the building, <laughs> <laughs> and it was star studded. You know, yeah. I was the junior coming yeah, into yeah. this mix, and yeah. and I met uh, um, uh, Becky along with Sharon McCormick and Edna yeah. Robertson. Yeah, sir. Oh my God, and, you and those you. people, yes, I had yes, yes. some great mentors. Yeah. I had some great yeah. friends yeah. and friendships that developed, and and so in that environment. In my thinking, it was not possible to to not learn anything unless you just were there for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. 
every office that I went to and all of those names that I mentioned are the reasons, um, the largest reasons why I've continued to do this kind of work. Mm -hmm. They all had their own styles yeah. and their, their own, the, but, but the, the, the number one theme uh, that I saw that was the thread through the fabric was their love and their and their nurturing ability with each and every young person that they came in contact with. Becky still has that. She mm -hmm. still does that. Yes. You know, the passion yes. that she uh, exuded uh, rubbed off on me. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm told, so thankful for that opportunity. Let me say that I think everything that she said is, is, is correct. We are, are dealing with multiple issues in, in our society now. Everyone deserving of our attention. Uh, be it political, uh, educational, um, social, emotional, uh, physiological. I mean, these kids are very complex creatures. But what I've come to know in all of the trainings that I've gone to uh, across the country all these years, all of the, the educational opportunities, though few, that I've had, formal mm -hmm. education, and the experiences with working with young people in the community and their families, and all of the organizations involved, is it's not complicated. It, 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 it's not rocket science. It, 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 you know, all of the best practices and evidence-based um, information that we are bombarded with now and they need for you to articulate in writing when you're looking for any form of public mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, those are good, but love, kindness, mm -hmm. consideration, compassion, caring, mm -hmm. um, selflessness mm -hmm. are the types and consistency are the types of things that I have come to know that, that children need. Those are things that we all have, their abilities that we have all been given. And here's the, the magic thing about it those things don't cost money mm -hmm. and so it's a, it's a time issue how do i want to spend my time what are my priorities um, if we can get over ourselves long enough to extend the kind word to look a young person in the eye and 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 not let them feel like we're afraid to speak mm -hmm. to them but just engage them um, the way that our parents engaged us the way that our neighbors uh, when we had true, I think, neighborhoods mm -hmm. engaged us, uh, it will make all the difference. It's very simple to me. Mm -hmm. John, Becky, let's go back in time. John, John mentioned very clearly that you were part and parcel of that whole scenario with Edna and all of them. Everybody's on in one roof, you know, at the King facility there and whatever. One, uh, share a bit about what was the definition of that facility at that point in time and how has it changed to date and reflect on that? It was, it was kind of the hub of the neighborhood at that time. Okay. Charles Ford, the patriarch of the community, Edna, okay. the matriarch of the community, yes. uh, many years of wisdom, and uh, they were my mentors. And, um, and it was the hub, as John said, there were so many programs there mm -hmm. that, that were targeting young people. And Any specific focus? Well, there had been the first gang shooting in 1988. Okay. And um, so we, I moved here on a Saturday, went to a gang task force meeting on Monday mm -hmm. or Tuesday, which is probably where I met John, I'm yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the community was saying, what can we do? What do we do? And uh, we all came together. We came together. I don't recall it being political. I don't recall any of that. I. What I remember is we've got a problem in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, we have a young man who's now dead. We need to address this problem, and and we did work together. Um, that first summer we did a jobs program, and the youth gang outreach workers worked with my office. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of us were getting paid. I don't even remember. It wasn't much if we were, and we put hundreds of young people uh, to work. But I think over time discovered that education was really, you know, they say education is the great equalizer. And, and I think we realized how many young people in our community had fallen out of the, edu the traditional education system, were on the street, um, were, were not in school, and that we had to address a far deeper issue than finding a young person a job mm -hmm. when they weren't even in school. Right. So I think we move forward, and um, I'm not sure if we have that same passion anymore 
Uh, I, I don't know. I know individuals do. Uh, I think we miss the Charles Fords and the Edna Robinsons and those older people that watch the change in the community. They've been hands-on with the problems for a number of years, but in all due respect. And then as a group, we need to start looking at, okay, what do we do before that child breaks the law, before that child is so desperate they have nothing to live for and they are so full of hurt and pain they don't care who they hurt. Yes. Yeah. What do we do? And. Um, we're, we're not doing it as a group. We're not doing it as a society right now. Case in point, um, look at what Portland Public School offers. You, there's absolutely no safety net for a freshman. None. In, um, what, in what regards? What, what's your definition well, of safety net? Here, here's, I'll, I'll use an example. I have a 14-year-old um, young man in my life um, who we've been trying to connect, who we've been trying to repair. Um, he's missed over 100 classes already. Mm -hmm. All F's. We've been, I mean, two, three times a week we're talking to his counselor. And there's absolutely at the nothing. At, yes, at Benson. She's at Benson. Nothing they said, they said we can do because they said, Mr. Jedi, they reminded me, you're on the school board, so you should know what's going on. And I say, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing available for freshmen. They're telling us that we've got to wait until, basically until he's 16. Hmm. Um, Job Corps will not touch you until you're 16. You got you to be 16 before you get into that program. Um, the uh, National Oregon National Guard has a really good program. Again, 16. Hmm. So there's the, just like you said, Becky, we have a society that wants to wait until it's a huge, it's a mountain, instead of dealing with it when it's a molehill, um, until anybody does anything. And frankly, I have to wonder if it's not by design. Hmm. We have a growing number of agencies and industries that are making their bread and butter mm. from that pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. In 19, prior to 1980, there were no um, um, prison industrial complex national convention. Zero, did not exist. Today, in fact, starting in 1980, until up to today, it's the largest national convention in America perhaps even bigger than the military, mm. but certainly bigger than everybody else, including technology. You would think IT mm. would have the biggest, most grandiose national convention. Conventions is where all the players come together and talk about the things they in do. In education. In education. education. Yeah. Um, everybody. When you look at all the conventions, that's big business. Yes. Look at the prison system. America's largest. There's a lot of people, what I'm saying is making their money on that, I shouldn't say a lot of people. There's a lot of money being made in that industry. Yeah. It's not a lot of people, but a lot of money being made in that industry. And unfortunately, it, they're just like the NRA protects the interests of the guns and stuff, these guys are protecting the interests of that system. Well, that system needs clients and customers. The clients and customers come from kids that are this big that are heading into the legal system. Tell, tell me something, Derek. I, now, during your tenure at the school board, um, as you know, uh, you had to be elected citywide. Mm -hmm. And there was an effort to basically say, okay, you should be elected in a district situation, from a district area. Therefore, a person would be more responsive mm -hmm. in, in those areas because of the issues within those particular areas. And I know you were having difficulties mm -hmm. because the rest of the folks didn't understand where you were, because you were from North Portland. Yeah. And, and so, uh, did, did, did that ever come to an issue? Did that ever come to the table to talk about yeah, the it did. impact let, and effect? Let me, let me, talk fact, about it a little bit. It, it's, I'm going I'm to show a little bit of my own selfishness, but I should educate. This is about education. I would prefer that we remain elected citywide, and here's why. You may recall that there were not one, but two recall petitions on my tenure on the board. Okay. Had I been, had we been elected from districts, they probably would have qualified that, that um, recall petition because it would have required a smaller number of signatures mm -hmm. to get the petition on the ballot. But because I was elected citywide, as was all of us, the threshold to get the, the recall on the ballot was greater. And both petitions failed to meet those the, that that threshold. But what about the number of the folks from your perspective? Did, did you figure out the, the number of people in your di respective districts that voted to oust you, or whatever? Uh, no, I, we never. It didn't. It never didn't got to too far. Point. It never got yeah. too far. So a lot of that um, that analysis wasn't had. Perhaps mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. did. But um, what I realize is is that there was some value, um, selfishly, 
for me in being elected citywide because they failed for not getting the right the number of signatures and in fact the the gentleman that started the big one came and apologized to me at right after or during a school board meeting for even going that far um, because I think he had by that time come to his senses about what I was trying to do um, bottom line is this um, the interests of North we, we are all breathing the same air it's just like you know what happened in Japan is very important to us we're realizing because it had a nuclear meltdown and problems over there but the stuff is ending up over here we're we're a global community the things that are affecting North Portland might have some unique characteristics but we're a member of a of a larger family the but city. how do they react to the issues because I remember you on the board yeah. you were trying to bring the issues your issues to the table but the rest of the board members wouldn't react in court, i.e. lack of exposure. Well, the rest of the board members, in fact, this is the problem with politics. Politics is about money. And unfortunately, I, my, my, my feelings continue to be. The reason why our leaders are not doing the right thing, including those that were there, is because they have to listen to the money, the moneyed interests. The moneyed interests are not, their needs and objectives are not the same as, as the rank and file. You know, we have, a, we have a situation, we live in a situation where CEOs are cutting jobs, cutting salaries as they're increasing their own and telling us that they don't have any money. Same thing that's going on in, in Congress. And my, my point is this, the people who have the power and the influence, their agendas are quite almost the antithesis of the rest of us. They're, we live in a in an in a economy where there are scarce resources, mm -hmm. and instead of realizing that there's enough for everybody to share, there's a growing number of a smaller growing number of people who just want more and more and more and more. Okay, that means be, you're going to take it away from but others. I'm going to be selfish again too. Go for it. What about our present board right now? See, we're, we're trying to react to this issue right now. Do you think are they going to be able to respond to some of the issues that they, 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 we were talking about here? The, the problem with leadership but, is we we got if you had if this was a football team. And you got a failing team. The first thing they do, John, is they get rid of the heads, don't they? That's right. You fire the coaches. Right. You fire the lead. You get rid of the leadership. If we want something to change, mm -hmm. we've got to get rid of what's there. Mm -hmm. Their interest is mm -hmm. always going to be to protect what they did before. Some way or somehow, they're going to protect what they did before. They're not going to say, "Oh, we messed up. We really, we really should have done it another way." Good. Well, no. I tell you what. Good point. The governor just did that. He got rid of the state superintendent. Now he's a superintendent. They put together a board. What do you think about that? Well, uh, John, uh, Kitts Harbor right now, I'm ticked off with him because he just showed his hand. He just gave away something like 40 years of tax something to Nike. What kind of guarantee are we going to get that Nike is actually going to create those 500 to whatever thousand jobs well, and he, keep he, them for 40 years? Now, but he, hired a, he hired a new guy. He hired new Rudy, Rudy Crew. Okay. I know Rudy Crew. We tried to, we, when I was there, At I the, met the Rudy Crew. School? Yes. I met Rudy Crew. You guys I've tried been, to hire him at one time? Uh, we tried to hire Rudy, Rudy Crew. Rudy Crew is a wonderful guy. I, I love this guy. Um, but, but do you like the makeup of the state right now I, as far as education? The, what is the, the problem now. with it? This is a good example where you do need to look at it at a local, a local standpoint. Salem Kaiser's issues are not the same as Roosevelt's issues or Benson or Jefferson. When you sit up there at your castle throne and try to, to try to regulate everything and create this one size fit all you're bound to it I, I call it you're looking for the least common denominator so it's going to be a fair system no I think there's a problem I, 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 I think I think I think there's already a problem because I, I, number one I want to add this is good go on you can have the best leadership but if you have a self-perpetuating bureaucracy, yeah. <laughs> one good person coming in, or five or ten, won't make a bit no. a difference. Yeah. And the system, be undermined. We, the system we have right now, I've had high hopes many times when various people were made superintendent yeah. or uh, other positions <laughs> or elected to the school board. You're part of a system that's bigger than an individual, unless and as long as the Sorry, unions are in control, and uh, we have a self-perpetuating bureaucracy. I'm sorry, I don't think we're going to see any changes. John, what do you think? Well, I, I, I don't know about that. I, I agree with what I'm hearing, but I see the kids who are shunned by the system. I, 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 I have been on the notification teams to parents and grandparents and guardians, sadly, when children are shunned, 
and they take up their own devices in the community to try and get a piece of what there is enough to go around for everyone. But it's not handed to them. And I walk up this very darkly lit path, knock on a, 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 a very cold, hard door in weather like we're having to say, your child's not coming home. Mm. Because of all this, I hate, I hate. To, to to say that to a parent or or a guardian, because we can't get it right. The, p politics, uh, education, all important. But is it worth making notifications to Josiah's family? It, it, that's the part I deal with, and that is the part that I learned very clearly when I was in City Hall that I have a distaste for. Mm -hmm. uh, politics, it's necessary and we have to go there, but if it prevents me, just me, from being the kind of advocate that I know I've been and can be mm -hmm. to a child and a family, then I will have to say goodbye to politics and go back to the neighborhood and continue to do what, what is sound in my heart and in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. So while all of these other things will happen, People have called me naive for, for, for just seeing a very uh, uh, small slice of this pie. But Mr. Broussard, at the end of the day, when I rest and I've communicated all the messages of love and concern I can to my children and other, others I've come in contact with, I sleep better. I appreciate that. You know, uh, yeah, I might make another point, too. And I wanted to make that point in regards and all due respect to the governor. When I think about the board he's put together, if you will, I don't see this message at that board to have that discussion talking about the issues that we're talking no, it's about. Too high. it's too high. And in all due respect, I even see that in the Portland Public Schools too. I, I, I see the, the board, they're not react. They're no. not going to be able to react to this issue because they don't have this kind of, they're not going to have this kind of discussion because you have to have an individual who's had that exposure and it's very key. Look like we're about ready at the end of the show. Look like we're going to have another another series here. <laughs> it's very important. Well, folks, thanks very much for being here You're with welcome. us. Derry, always a pleasure. You bet. Okay, man. John, Thank always you. a pleasure. Thank Keep you, up the good work, John. Okay, good. Okay, fine. Again, this is Bruce Broussard. Take care. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.